So how's it going, Donald? It's going well, uh, as good as it possibly can. We are on the 29th show of 29 shows. So I would be lying if I... I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit beat up from six weeks on the road, but uh, the shows have been awesome. A Modern Moth, really good friends of ours. Carcass is one of my favorite bands, and, and uh, the Cattle Decapitation guys are really cool. So it's been a really fun tour for, for Obituary, for sure. Yeah, great. It's your last night tonight, right? Before Christmas. Yeah, last night, and we're playing uh, the biggest the biggest show of the tour. So it's uh, it's going to be, we're going to go out with a bang, for sure. Oh, fantastic. So your next release will come out. Uh, it's your 12th studio album, right? It will come out. It's called Dying of Everything. And it will come out on a Friday the 13th in January. <laughs> right? It's a fantastic yeah. date. So uh, the sound of this album, of course, I heard it. It reminded me a lot of Slowly We Rot, which is one of the early things. And I remember you guys from back then. I don't want to talk about age, but you know. Um, so uh, <laughs> back to the roots kind of thing. So was that a deliberate thing to kind of go back to the way you guys used to sound like 30 it, years ago? Yeah, no, it, it wasn't deliberate. But I think what happened, and it was it's, it's kind of a cool scenario, is that everybody knows that the whole world got shut down with the pandemic. And at, in that time, we, uh, we learned what... Uh, a live stream was and we taught ourselves uh, and we updated upgraded the studio and and we were able to do live streams uh the first two that we did we played the entire slowly we rot album and then the next weekend the entire cause of death and i remember thinking when we announced that we were going to do that that was fun but then the reality was oh my god we got to go learn these songs and all these these 30 something year old songs that we, some of them we've never played on stage and uh so we did we did our homework <laughs> we practiced and uh we familiarized ourselves with the songs and uh to answer your question i think that helped us i think it brought back the old the old juices it, it kind of brought us back to when we were teenagers and 20 year olds at learning those songs so with the writing process of the new album maybe some of that rubbed off on on the new songs because uh like you said, it 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 does have that a uh, classic obituary feel to some of these songs. Yeah, exactly, and I and, and myself and all the fans uh, that have been around for a while surely appreciate that. So um, the album it kicks off with a song called "Barely Alive." So uh, it it just hits you hits you hits you right in the stomach because <laughs> there's no count for the song. Like if you're not ready for it, it goes like bam in your face. Yeah. That's a perfect song for like your alarm clock. So how did you guys come up with that idea of not yeah, having like, you know, you know a, a sound or whatever? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, songs are individual and you work you work on each song. Um, and when you're when you're working on that song, you know, you focus your complete focus is on that song. Um, but you do you do work on 10 songs at one time when you're, you know, when you're writing an album and, and writing riffs and, and uh, songs. And that was just one of the songs where uh we knew we were going to start it that way. It is the fastest double bass uh, tempo I've ever attempted. I don't know why at the age of 52 years old, I decided to play this tempo. <laughs> it's young. It's but, young. It's too young. When yeah, you're 100, but, you might think, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but 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 I am. I'm faster than I've ever been on, on, on drums with my feet. And and so, yeah, with that song, it just start, it starts the way it starts. And it punches you right in the face. And then it's relentless and it never stops. And, uh. We knew once once we were finished with all the songs, I told the band, I said, we can fight all day or all week or all month, but this is going to be the first song on the album. It has to be. It's been six years since the last album, five years or so. And uh, luckily, everyone agreed because uh, it just it's a like you said, it, there's no warning sign like a lot of people are going to have their stereo too loud and they're not going to know it and it's going to scare the crap out of them, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is great. <laughs> it's great and it's very effective and it's amazing. So uh, the lead single, um, The Wrong Time, right? It's, it's, it's my favorite song of the album. I heard the whole album, of course, and um, it's a fantastic um, obituary uh, classic, mid-tempo groove. The groove is amazing. And, you know, um, lots of your songs on this album have that kind of groove. So uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Because does it have anything to do with your maturity? 
Because it sounds I mean, it, like amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, first off, thank you. That's an awesome compliment. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs by far. Uh, we are playing it live every night on this tour, and the fan and the fans' mm-hmm. reaction is awesome. Um, okay. Yeah, that I, you know, it's just one of those classic obituary songs where it was one of the first songs we wrote uh, when we started writing, and uh, and it held its own. It's got groove to it. Uh, John's voice is just awesome in it very catchy for for a john tardy type lyric where it seems like people like i'm seeing it live because we're playing it live that john sings the the first time the first time the first verse and chorus by the time he goes to the second time he's singing it people are already kind of almost singing the song with him it's it's that kind of song where you feel like you've already known you already know the song when you've heard it only halfway through so um and again it you know we knew what we were doing uh it was a deliberate first single because we were coming on tour with Amon Marth, and those fans are heavy metal fans and they are yeah. huge heavy metal fans, but many of them probably are not familiar with obituary and Florida death metal. So we, we picked uh, that as the first single cause we knew we were going to play it live every night. And we did, we want wanted we wanted a mid tempo groovy classic feeling obituary song. And, uh, and the crowd reaction is, has been fantastic. Oh, that's great. So um, uh, your previous album, The self Time, so it came out in 2017, right? Uh, so around five, almost less than six years ago. So uh, why so long in between? Did it have anything to do with the pandemic situation? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, we, uh, we, we haven't been to, to Europe since we uh, were lucky enough to play with Slayer. Uh, but our plan was to do, to, to do the Slayer tour, get home, write an album and get back over there and all those fans that enjoyed obituary we were hoping to to capitalize and 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 invite them to an obituary show but we were on an american tour <coughs> excuse me and um and then we know the pandemic hit mm-hmm. so you know it's amazing that we we have been um sitting on this album for two years it's been literally finished finished um mm-hmm. for two years so the pandemic was a big part of that and even though uh, the United States started opening up and, and obituary has done a hundred, uh, 120 shows in America now since the pandemic opened again. Um, but we knew until Europe was open for business and our fans were there and we were able to get over there. It was a very easy business decision to, to wait with this album until the world is ready and we can get to all the places that we need to, to promote it and celebrate it. So, so yes, it, it, we've been waiting a long time for this album. Yeah, it must have been hard to sit on an album ready. It right? was very hard. I listened <laughs> yeah. to it so many times thinking, oh, if they only can hear this song. <laughs> yeah, it's one of your best albums. You know, it's um, it's truly amazing. There's a an energy to it, you know, maybe because it was it was done. But did the pandemic have any to, anything to do with it lyrically or no? Nah, I mean... John, John definitely doesn't uh, preach to people. He's not going to come up with subjects because of the pandemic. And, and again, we, we wrote this album t- two, over two years ago. So um, pandemic, it gave us time. It gave us the uh, opportunity to focus on the songs a little more and mm-hmm. redo a couple things and tweak a couple rhythms and make the songs as, as good as we can make them. Um, and that, that was a blessing. And I don't like using that word, uh, when there was a pandemic going on, but it was yeah. a luxury that we had. So, yeah, so it, it it's, it, it, we were able to take our time and it really shows because these songs, there's a, there's a big variety on this album. It goes from super fast to the last song on the album. It, it could be possibly the slowest song, yeah. heaviest, like sludge song obituary ever written. Yeah, that's true. So, um, and what was the right, you're talking about it. So what was the writing process like? for this one because how do you guys approach it because um is it first like instrumental and then the vocals or the groove before the guitar the guitar before the groove so how yeah. does it work we uh we've always uh, we've always approached uh, writing songs the same way since we were teenagers and that's uh <coughs> excuse me um that's going into the practice room uh usually me and Trevor and open mind positive attitude and don't think too much about it. We don't care about what we did on the last album. We don't care what album another band just put out that uh, we try to, you know, you know, maybe, you know, try to write a song because of something like that. 
we just get in the studio and we we keep we keep our mind open and we and the main thing is we have a good time we we try to have fun doing it and and if a song doesn't happen that day we don't push the envelope we don't press the issue we we mm. we know that tomorrow is another day and that's the luxury having the studio you know at the house at, at my brother's house and we've done the last four or five albums there uh mm. it's 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 a luxury to be able to write any time of the day that you want and then when it comes to the recording process, I can record my drums at nine in the morning or at 10 o'clock at night if I want to. And uh, that's that's huge when it comes to the the, the comfort of of home. Yeah, and, that, uh, that that helped that helped a lot. Yeah, that's what my next question was going to be about. I think you already answered it because it's like you work in your own studio and you have for a while, I think it was like executioner return. Was that it? Yeah. Like a while yeah. back. So um, how is that different? from working at a paid studio, you know, yeah. like you got, does it affect the the writing process or just the recording process? Because you guys yeah, have I mean, studio to write in, right? It's different. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, ha if we have, were going to a studio to record it, of course, that would change everything with the recording process. But I think the writing process still would have happened at John's house, like we've done for 20 something years now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and that's just a that's just a fun process that the band does uh, on our own. Then if we were entering a studio, then yes, the pressure is on. You you know that every hour you're there, you're spending the money, whether you feel good or you don't feel good, or if your drumming wasn't great that day. Um, so that's the big luxury is is to have the studio any time of the day. Um, John records by himself. He literally just runs the Pro Tools rig on his own and sings his sings his his verses and his lyrics pretty pretty much on this album 90 percent of it was him doing it by himself and then the mm -hmm. same thing with drums i i uh, a lot of them i was in the studio by myself with the pro tools rig and uh hit the space bar and the record button and run over to my drums and put my headphones on and and, and record and then john would come out and help me fix some of the you know some of the endings and stuff of songs but it's cool it's it's we're very fortunate that we have the studio at the house because it does make it uh a pleasant experience and many musicians will tell you that sometimes the studio is not very pleasant it's very nerve-wracking mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you talk about fun right so <clears throat> whenever a person thinks of death metal you know we think of these um very aggressive and angry songs like this music that is about grotesque things but you know everybody involved in death metal is really fun and easygoing and this is like all over the place from the the bands like you guys that have been around for 30 years until uh, up until the bands that have uh they're more technical deaths and like ah you think oh my god these guys <laughs> spend the whole day studying studying but everybody's so easygoing and fantastic so um is music uh, cathartic and even a bit therapeutic for for you guys so like yeah. um you know, it, it, the, all the aggressive and nasty stuff goes out in the music, yeah. and you guys just yeah. have fun with life. And it is, man. I mean, it, it, it's music. It's but it's there to it's there for the fans, and pe it's there for people to get off work of their job. And you usually use music as therapy in in life. Yeah. And uh, I'm a fan of music, so when I'm playing music, it is very therapeutic, and it is extremely fun. There is nothing, and I've said it in many interviews, there's nothing more fun for me than to get behind my drum set and, and to play, whether there's no one watching or like tonight where there's going to be 6,000 people. It, it doesn't matter. It's the most fun uh, a human can have is, is my, is for me is playing, playing my drum kit. So uh, yeah, we, we, we try to have a good time uh, in the studio, but also when we're on the road and, uh, and we're on tour and we're on stage, people see us, we, we can't help but smile because we are having a good time. <laughs> yeah, and it is fun I mean, for, for people in the audience. At least when I'm in the audience, I have fun watching guys like you guys, like, you know, all the bands that are death metal or any any type of music. I think it's, we go there to sort of, you know, yeah. alleviate to get away. thoughts. Yeah, to yeah. get away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, Obituary has a, a long-spanning career, obviously. So you went through all the changes in the industry. Like you guys started in the 80s when... A band that, like Motley Crue would sell millions and millions of records and become millionaires overnight, right? Um, so how do you guys feel about streaming services and the way the mu music is distributed nowadays? Yeah, I mean, this 
we could talk about this till uh, tomorrow if we if we wanted to and, and and it is a touchy subject with any musician because yeah. um you know we, we are trying to make a living playing mm -hmm. music and um it's just it it is a it is a bit of a slap in the face with streaming services um and fans listening to it but but the world is changing you can't cry over spilled milk and you have to adapt and so we know that i mean when when a new car company uh when they put car new cars out and there's not even a cd player in the car what does that tell the music industry and what does that tell musicians you, you physical copies of cds they're they're going to be they're going to be gone within a blink of an eye i have a feeling and uh but again you know we all listen to music on our phones there's no question about it everyone does yeah. around the world and uh so we we have to adapt and obituary is pretty good at adapting and that means being on the road longer uh making killer merchandise for our fans to uh mm -hmm. to to want and then uh and then we just kindly remind them that yes we uh we pour our hearts and souls into these albums and these songs and we spend a lot of money on tour to get out there every corner of the globe and we just hope that they um if they're <clears throat> able to uh, to, to buy a, buy a t-shirt i mean that, that means that means a million to us that, that means uh, the world to us because it is how we keep the bus rolling it's what how we pay our crew and it's how we pay our bills so you know lo that was a, a long story you know and you know i don't want to get bitter and, and mad and think fans uh shouldn't do what they do because it, it's a modern world now everyone has smartphones and everyone's listening to music on them and there's nothing we can do about that so you know we love our live streams we love we love being on the road, and, and that is how we try to make a living uh, on the road. And so we just ask fans to uh, to remember that when they're coming and seeing an obituary. Yeah, it is more practical, but not necessarily as great as owning a, a, a vinyl copy of one of your albums and, you know, going through the artwork and looking at that big thing. Oh, my God, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not everyone has the means to afford that. <laughs> That's right. That's why, I, again, I'm cheap. not going to get... Yeah, I'm not going to get super mad and say nobody should be streaming uh, because it's it's happening and it, it, it is a changing world and and we have to we have to roll with the roll with the punches. You're absolutely right. So uh, you you guys have a great sound as a live band. You sound tight and fantastic, and you're always smiling, having fun, and the fans can can sense that. So uh, how do you feel about the overuse? Not the use because I understand. Not everyone has a keyboard player on tour or whatever, but how do you feel about the overuse of backing tracks um, in live situations? Yeah, I mean, some bands it, some bands it's it's necessary and it makes it a great show. Uh, I can only speak for myself though that you know, Obituary is uh, is a live band. Yeah. We are live. We it, this is what we we knew at a young age that we were pretty good live, and 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 uh, it's very difficult to make great albums, but we we do put on great shows. So for, for obituary there, you know, there will be no click tracks, no backing tracks, uh, no cowbell in my ear. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it, that's just the way it is. It's nothing wrong with it. Some of the, some of the bands and the technical, ter you know, uh, aspects of it, they, it, it helps those productions yeah. and, and, uh, and that's cool. And, um, I've done it. I did it with Andrew WK. Uh, I played, um, with click tracks in my ears and backing tracks for four and a half years with him. So I've been there, done that. But with obituary, no question that we are live, 100%. <laughs> yeah, but a click track is not a bad thing. It's just a guide. Problem is when someone, and, and like if you don't have a keyboard player on stage and you need some filling, it's not a problem. Problem is when yeah. the guitar players are not playing their guitars and it's something coming from yeah. the bass. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, so um, you guys are finishing a tour now, as I mentioned before, with Amon Amarth and a carcass. Like tonight, it's amazing. So um, in January, right after you guys released your new album, you started the European tour alongside Trivium, uh, Heaven Shall Burn and Malevolence, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yep. you, you always take part in these very eclectic metal uh, lineups, you know, like sort of tours. Yeah. So how does the audience react? And what is the response uh, in those situations? <coughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> it's a good question because it is very... It's a very deliberate choice and uh, decision to take a tour like with Trivium, because uh, once again, just like a Modern Marth, they their fans are heavy metal fans, 
but they might not know. Um, uh, uh, they might have seen the obituary logo, but many of them have never never had an album or seen it live. So with the the Europe tour, with the new album coming out, yes, we wanted to uh, get in in front of new fans and people that have not seen us before. Because again, it goes back to we love our live show. We put we 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 play very solid, and uh, a lot of people entering the the venues are going to say. Uh, before they even hear it i don't like i don't like death metal and uh mm -hmm. i'm not gonna like this band but two songs into it you can see them kind of like and then by the end time we're finished everyone's clapping so it's like you know victory so it, it yeah. was it was a deliberate it was a deliberate choice to to get to get out with a, a little bit different style of music with the other bands to uh to push the album on 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 new fans and of course obituary fans are going to come out in the masses because it's been five and a half years or, or six years yeah. now that we've been to Europe. So we are, we are very excited for those fans to come and find us as well. Yeah. And your sound has a, an appeal to fans that are not uh, necessarily like sort of classical death metal fans. Yeah. yeah yep. It's more, it's more appealing to more people. And right, so how do you choose your set list for these uh, different tours with different bands? And Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, I, I don't want to use obvious, uh, answer but yeah you know you have to you have to realize who's walking into the venues um and you you know a lot of obituary fans want to hear the old stuff off of slowly rot but you know i personally think um obituary gets better with every album and the self-titled album we we were extremely happy with it and super excited and now with this new album it's it, it is the best stuff we've ever done and so it's going to be hard not to to play these songs live because uh, the, you know you're only as good as the last song you wrote, and uh, that's kind of how we feel. And so it's a it's a it's a touchy subject when we select uh, set lists for live concerts. Uh, you can um, you can imagine if if all band members are putting their two cents worth in, you're gonna have ten different set lists. It's never gonna work. So it's usually mm -hmm. my brother and myself figuring out what's a smart move. What are the classic songs? What are we going to push on people with the new stuff? And, you know, that that's what we're working on right now for the European tour. Yeah, guys have over 100 songs now. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. 30 some years, 75 years of career now. Yes. Because, <laughs> yeah, it's young. Don't worry. Uh, so uh, <laughs> anything else you'd like to add to your friends, say to your friends out there? Yeah, I mean, it. it you just said it. 35 years in this business and uh, somehow in some way we are still having the most fun we've ever had um i think that's because we're family we are close friends and have been for a long time and uh, and we enjoy we enjoy being on the road and we enjoy performing for fans that love our music and that is that is a something i'll never take for granted and it, it is a motivation where uh the minute we're getting ready to start a show or head on an airplane to head to europe it is that drive that keeps me excited uh, as if I was 20 years old still, and uh, it makes me perform the, the best I possibly can. So for Europe and the fans that show up, they're going to get a great show from Obituary because we are we're on fire right now. Every, every, all pistons are are firing properly, and uh, we're having a good time. So we're 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 excited about Europe. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. So thank you very much for talking to Kazine today, and uh, yeah. you know I wish you all the best for your future and a lot of fantastic success with your new album. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you, you very much. So and much. Thanks to the fans, man. Thank thank everybody. <laughs> and I, we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Donald. Yeah, you're very welcome. Bye. Have a great okay, show bye. tonight. Yeah.